This is the effect that we'll be creating today. In the description, you can find a link to the code where you can start playing around with it immediately. Otherwise, grab yourself a code editor and you can code along with me. The first thing we're gonna do is create a point class. So in the constructor, we're passing through the X and Y location of the point, the angle that it's traveling in and the radius of the point, and we're storing those values onto the class. Next up, we're creating the update function, and this is what's gonna move our point about the screen. The first thing that we're doing is we're actually reducing the size of the radius so that the point shrinks over time. And we're also updating the angle it's traveling in so that it waves about randomly. Now note, we're using radians here. So this pi on six translates to 30 degrees. So that's just something to be aware of. Now that we've changed the direction and size of the point, we're gonna use this to update the position of the point. We use the cos and sine function here to travel in the direction of the angle. And in that direction, we move as far as the radius. Next, we're going to create a draw function, which will show our point on the screen. And to do this, we're simply just going to call the circle function, which takes in the X and Y location of the point. And we also pass in the radius times two because it takes a diameter. Let's get these points on the screen. So to do that, we're going to create a points array. And this will keep track of all of the points we're currently updating on the screen. Along with this, we're also going to want a number of how many points we want on the screen. And we're also going to have a start radius, which is how big the points are when they start. Next, we're gonna make a create burst function, and this is what's gonna fill up our points array. First, we wanna make sure that our points array is empty. Then we're gonna create a for loop that goes over all the values between zero and the number of points that we want. Inside the for loop, we're gonna create new points and push them into the points array. We're gonna to pass to them the middle of the screen as their X and Y location, which is width on two and the height on two. For the angle, we're gonna choose a random value between zero and tau, which is two pi, which is the full 360 degrees and we're gonna pass in that start radius as their start radius. Now we're pushing things into the points array, but we're not actually doing anything with them yet. Inside the draw function, we're gonna go through each of the points using a for each loop. And on each point, we wanna call update and then draw. We're then gonna call the create burst function from within the setup, and this should give us a burst as soon as we run our project. As you can see, this is not the result that we wanted. And the reason for that is this effect relies on each of the previous points that we've drawn to stay on the screen. And at the moment, inside the draw function, we're setting the background each time. So what we wanna do is we wanna actually move this background call into the setup. Now, when we run this, we see the previous points stay on the screen, but there's clearly some other stuff going on. So let's fix that up. First, we're gonna create a speed variable. And I've set this to a value below one to slow the points down. Inside the point update function, we're gonna multiply the points movement by this new speed variable. Now, when you run this, you can see that we're much closer to the final effect, but the points grow after they've shrunk all the way down to zero. The reason this happens is we passed a negative diameter into the circle function and the circle function treats us the exact same as a positive value. So when we get a really large negative number, it treats it the same as a really large positive number. The way that we're gonna fix this is to check if the burst is done. And by default, we'll set that value to false. We're also gonna set it to false inside the create burst function so that when we start a new burst, we know that it's not done. Then inside the point update loop, we're gonna to check to see if the radius of the point is beneath zero. If it is, we're now done. We wanna then wrap everything inside the draw function inside this if not done statement. And this just makes sure we're not updating the points once we've finished the burst. And so if we run this now, we get them stopping at the correct spot. At the moment, we have to keep stopping and starting the sketch to get a new burst each time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in some interactivity. To do this, we're gonna create a mouse released function which gets called every time we click the mouse. And inside it, we're gonna just call the create burst function. Now, if we run this and we click, we get another burst, but as you can see, the old burst is still on the screen. To fix this inside the create burst function at the top, we're just going to clear the background once again and now each time we click, we get a new burst on the screen. You could stop here, but we're gonna do something with the colors to give it a slightly 3D effect. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna call no stroke inside the setup. And what this does is removes the outline from our circles. So when we run this, we just get a white blob. Inside the point draw function, we're gonna declare two colors, the start color and the end color. And these will be the colors for the gradient of each tentacle. The start color I've got as a dark purple and the end color I've got as a light purple. To create the gradient, we're gonna use the lerp color function, which sort of blends between two colors based on a third parameter. And that third parameter just decides how much of one color versus the other to use. To calculate this value, we're gonna use the map function and we're gonna map the radius of the point between its start radius and its 
end radius, which is zero. And when it's at a start radius, we want to be using the start color. So we give it a value of zero. And when it's at the end, we want it to use the end color. So it gets a value of one. We're then going to use this color that we've just calculated as the fill color for the circle. And when we run this, we should get our final effect. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you've enjoyed it and maybe learned something from it as well. If you have, hit the like button and feel free to subscribe as well. And if you've got any ideas of what you'd like to see me try next, leave it in the comments down below. See you next time.